we're going to be tying up a bright butt zebra midge. Um, this is a really good pattern for beginners, and it's actually a really effective pattern, a great midge pattern as well. Uh, I've got some 0 .010 um, lead that I'm wrapping onto the shank of the hook here. Just take a few wraps there. I'm going to hold that in place with this other finger and go ahead and just rock this other piece off as well. So we can just throw those away. And what that's going to do is not only help us get down in the water, but it's going to help us stabilize that, that bead. Um, we want it to get stabilized right behind there. I'm going to be using a size 16 jig hook here today. And we've got a 332nd nickel uh, bead on here. So now that I've got this far, we'll go ahead and get our thread. We're going to use black thread here. And we're going to attach that just right behind where we just tied that lead in. And I'm not going to take this very deep um, back to the bat and bend of the hook. About that far is going to be good enough for me. And we'll just go ahead and cut off our little tag end here. So we call this the bright butt because we're going to put some um, fluorescent thread at the butt end of this fly. And I'm just using a fluorescent kind of a pink color of floss. Uh, take a couple of turns of that. Um, to lock it down and then I'm just going to pull that thread backwards or this floss backwards Just so that I don't have to cut it off there Then I'm just going to take a few wraps backwards Securing that to the hook and then I'm going to bring my my thread back up So with this This floss um, we're just going to go ahead and create a little bit of a bump back here um a little bit closer to the back bend of the hook. So I'm just going to take a few wraps back there just to make that really clear and bright. From there I'm just going to bring that forward. And we'll be in a position where we can now tie that off. So we'll just throw our thread right over the top, secure it down, take a few thread wraps turn my vise a little bit sideways just so I can see that floss a little bit better and then I'm going to come in with my scissors and we're going to go ahead and detach that floss. All right we've got our bright butt um, going. Uh, next I'm just going to take a, a brassy size um, piece of silver wire and we're going to go ahead and attach that to the lens side of the hook. I'm going to draw that backwards. We're going to tie that back to where we're going to start really with the black portion of this fly. And I, I will turn my vise from side to side from time to time because um, I want to cover up some of that pink um, for our bright butt, but I don't want to cover it all up. So once I've got that silver wire in place, I'm just going to go ahead now and really focus on taper. So I'm just going to take some wraps back and forth with my thread here. Um, to build up a little bit of that bulk uh, behind the bead. You can see that the body on this fly is incredibly short and that's that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, as I work on that taper I'll start to spin my thread a little bit counterclockwise which will help me flatten it out a little bit. Um, actually make our taper look a little bit better. So that's all I'm working on here is that taper. So I want it thinner back by the, the bright butt and a little thicker as we move up towards the bead. So once we have the taper where we want it, we're going to just take our silver wire and we're only going to take a few wraps of the silver wire. Um, this is what a zebra midge usually looks like without the pink. It's just black, black thread with a nice silver wire and a bead. So we're just giving it the zebra body here. We'll just take that right up behind the bead. Like I said, only a couple of wraps. We think we're showing three wraps there. We'll go ahead and secure that silver wire. And then I'm just going to go ahead and friction um, pull it backwards and forwards until it breaks off nice and clean. 
So now that we've got our dubbing on, I'm just going to go ahead and slide it down a little bit. And again, you're not. It probably looks like a lot more on a this this macro lens than is really on here. There's very little dubbing on here. And I'm just building up a nice little black collar right behind the bead there, just like that. And really, that's all there is to the pattern. Um, I'm going to grab my whip finisher here, and we'll, we'll take a few wraps here right behind the bead to secure our thread. Pull that nice and tight. Go ahead and grab the back end of our whip finishing tool, which will help us cut that thread off. So with that done, there you go. Um, great zebra image pattern, um, the bright butt. You can use the fluorescent pink like I've used here. You can use chartreuse, you can use orange, um, whatever you want. Give it a shot, good pattern.